Hey third grade Trojans, Miss G here, and today we'll practice making inferences as we read. Um, and so you should have already watched the Brain Pop video for Monday and um, practiced making inferences with some short passages yesterday. Um, so we'll be using those to help us practice again today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Just to review, um, when you make an inference, it's kind of like being a detective. So you'll use the clues that you read in a text, plus you'll use what you already know, which is your background knowledge, to come up with an idea that the author hasn't explicitly written in the text. The only way to get good at making inferences is really to practice um, and really think about a text as you are reading it. So when we practice today, we're going to use some of the passages on the work you did yesterday to get good at explaining how you arrive at an inference. So basically today, we're going to be explaining how we know that our inference makes sense. Um, as we practice today, I want you to be engaged and participating, okay? Um, remember, that's how you learn. Um, if you have a paper copy of the activity you should have completed yesterday, you can participate by underlining the text evidence in the passage. Um, and I will give you time to do that. I'll remind you to pause the video. Um, if you don't have a paper copy, I want you to just read the text evidence out loud from the screen. So when I ask you to share your background knowledge, I want you to say it out loud to yourself or someone or something around you. So I know it's kind of weird maybe talking to yourself, but um, it will help you learn. Of course, you can always write things down too if you don't want to say it out loud. So remember to pause the video when I instruct you to. If you have a paper copy, underline, read it out loud, or say it out loud, or you can write it down. Okay, so for this one, I'll do a think aloud um, to model what we're going to, or how we're going to practice, okay? Maggie was getting ready to walk to school. She put on her coat and grabbed her backpack. As she was leaving, her mother said, I love you, be careful. So let's look at our choices. All right, this little toolbar needs to go away. All right, you can infer that A, Maggie is in kindergarten or first grade. B, Maggie lives close to school. C, Maggie is never late for school, or D, Maggie is excited about going to school. Well, I'm going to go through the choices first to see if I have text evidence for any of them. So the first one says Maggie is in kindergarten or first grade. Well, <clears throat> there's really no evidence in the text that helps me think or gives me a reason to think that she's a kindergartner or a first grader. Um, B, Maggie lives close to school. Well, it does say that she's going to walk to school, so that could be some evidence for maybe she lives close to school. Um, C, Maggie is never late to school. Well, it doesn't really give me any ideas about time or her being in a hurry or her mom reminding her to be late or not to be late. And then D, Maggie is excited about going to school. Um, really, you can't, you don't know how Maggie feels about going to school. There's no evidence to help you figure that out. So here's my text evidence. Maggie was getting ready to walk to school. It kind of only goes with B. So when I use my background knowledge, I do know that in order to be able to walk to school, Maggie has to live close by. So if you chose D, good job guys. Nice work. All right, let's go to the next one. Hudson hurried out of the house so he wasn't late for work. He wore overalls and carried a toolbox with wrenches in it. He hopped in his truck and drove off. The sign on his truck said, Pipe Masters. Okay, guys, here's the part where I want you to pause the video and find text evidence to support one of the answer choices, okay? Well, actually, hold on. Let's do this first. You can infer that A, Hudson is an auto mechanic. B, Hudson enjoys his job. C, Hudson works as a plumber. D. Hudson is a truck salesman. All right. Pause the video. Underline evidence on your paper copy if you have it or read it aloud from the screen. And don't forget to say how you know by talking about your background knowledge that helps you make the inference. All right. Here's the text evidence I found to help me make my inference. 
Um, it says he carried a toolbox with wrenches in it. Okay, so I know he fixes things probably or works on things. And then the sign on his truck said Pipe Masters. So my background knowledge tells me also that I know a plumber fixes pipes and might have to use tools like wrenches. So he might be a an auto mechanic, but um, the Pipe Masters things is what helped me um, kind of rule that one out. Hudson enjoys his job. Well, you really can't tell how he feels about his job. There's no text evidence for that one. Um, Hudson is a truck salesman. Well, my husband is a car salesman and he doesn't wear overalls and carry a toolbox. So I kind of use, use my background knowledge. He's not going to sell, sell any trucks. So he must be a plumber. And if you thought he was a plumber too, good job guys. High five. So if you don't know what a plumber is, that might um, might have made it tricky for you. So, um, you know, having background knowledge helps you uh, make inferences. And if you didn't have enough background knowledge to help you um, figure out that a plumber works on pipes, that's okay. Give yourself a high five anyway. All right. Here's the next one. Avery watched as her new next door neighbors moved in. She observed a tall man carrying a bicycle and a kayak into the garage. She also saw a young woman carrying a surfboard through the door. You can infer that A, her new neighbors are elderly. That means they're older. B, her new neighbors have several children. C, her new neighbors like to spend time outdoors. D, her new neighbors are kind and generous. Pause the video, um, find the text evidence to support one of your answer choices um, by either underlining it or reading it out loud. And don't forget to say how you know. Okay, here's the text evidence that I found to help me make my inference. Um, it, it says that she observed a tall man carrying a bicycle and a kayak into the garage. And then um, there was also a part about carrying a surfboard. Um, here's another one of those things where if you don't have background knowledge about it, you might not understand it. So a kayak is a type of boat. It's kind of like a canoe. Um, but we do have other clues, bicycle and surfboard. Okay. So my background knowledge, um, I know that a bicycle and a kayak and a surfboard are all things that you use outdoors. Um, so that kind of goes with C, her new neighbors like to spend time outdoors. Um, there's no evidence to show us that, um, um, how old they are. They, they might have several children, but really, you know, um, there's, it fits better with the whole outdoors thing, the bicycle, the surfboard and the kayak. Um, and then D, her new neighbors are kind and generous. We don't really have evidence for that one either. You ought to be proud of yourself. Good job, guys. All right, last one. When Joseph walked into the kitchen, he saw muddy paw prints on the floor. His mother's wet coat was hanging on a chair. Below the coat, he spotted his mother's rubber shoes. Joseph looked for his dog, Riley. He found Riley, who was soaking wet, lying on the couch, panting. Joseph can infer that. Okay, so now we have to think about Joseph's point of view. A, his mother gave Riley a bath. B, Riley played in the yard during a rainstorm. C, Riley dragged the coat outside. Or D, his mother took Riley for a walk in the rain. All right, guys, pause the video. You know what to do. All right, here's the text evidence that I found. Um, there were muddy paw prints, mother's wet coat. Um, she had rubber shoes, which I know that rubber shoes are good for when you have to walk outside in the rain. And then the last sentence, the dog is soaking wet, lying on the couch, panting. So I use my background knowledge, and I know that paw, uh, muddy paw prints, a wet coat, and rubber shoes means probably it's raining. And then since the dog is panting, it must have had some kind of exercise. Um, you know, he could have gotten a bath, but that doesn't, um, the, the evidence with the coat and the rubber boot or the rubber shoes, you know, doesn't go with that. Um, Riley played in the yard during a rainstorm. Well, he is muddy and he is panting, but again, we have to take into consideration the clues. 
Um, C, Riley dragged the coat outside, maybe, but again, with the rubber shoes, um, his mother took Riley for a walk in the rain is probably the best inference there. Nice job, guys. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay, so tomorrow, I want you to practice what we did today. Um, so today we made the inference and then we also explained how we know um, that the inference was correct. So we talked about text evidence and we talked about using our background knowledge. Um, so tomorrow you're gonna read a paragraph and then the questions, um, there'll be like an inference question. Like this one says, where was Tiffany? And then this is the part really that um, we're gonna pay close attention to. How do you know? Okay, so use a text plus your background knowledge. All right, thanks for your hard work today, guys. Click on the link in the description for a brain break and have a wonderful day.